In total, there were 11 manned flights in the Apollo program, nine of which were moon missions, six of which supposedly made a successful landing. But there were two other missions, Apollo 7 and Apollo 9. Apollo 7 was essentially the same mission as Apollo 1, the first manned test flight of the CSM. Originally, Apollo 1 was to be flown by Gus Grissom, Edward White and Roger Chaffee and rendezvous in Earth orbit with Gemini 12, flown by Jim Lavelle and Buzz Aldrin. However, when delays meant that Gemini 12 would be flying alone, Apollo 1's mission plan was slightly changed. Instead of rendezvousing with Gemini 12, Apollo 1 would rendezvous with its own spent S-4B stage, left abandoned in Earth orbit. Then came the Apollo 1 fire, and this objective was given to Apollo 7, flown by Apollo 1's backup crew Wally Sharar, Don Isley and Walter Cunningham. Apollo 9, flown by astronauts Jim McDivitt, Rusty Schweikart and David Scott, was the first manned flight test of the lunar module in Earth orbit. The limb had previously been flown unmanned on Apollo 5. This first manned test flight was originally scheduled for Apollo 8, but Lunar Module Spider would not be ready to fly until early 1969. During this development, US spy satellites discovered Russia's N-1 moon rocket ready for launch. Shortly afterwards, Zond 5 successfully became the first unmanned craft to circumnavigate the moon and return safely to Earth. NASA subsequently changed their plans. Apollo 8 would be the first manned circumlunar flight of the CSM, flown by astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lavelle and Bill Anders. McDivitt's mission would be moved to Apollo 9. What do I think of these missions? Well, with Apollo 7, I am sure it made orbit. Apollo 9? I'm not absolutely certain. Previously I pointed out that Ralph Rene believed both of these missions were real. Maybe he just accepted them as real, as they were both said to be below the Van Allen belts. Why am I uncertain about Apollo 9? Well, on one hand, myself and others have noticed various oddities that would suggest it was fate. And yet, other aspects suggest that it could not be anything else but real. Yeah, Rusty Schweikart is said to have made a spacewalk. His spacesuit shows signs of inflation. Yet he is wearing the pliss. It is believed that a fully suited astronaut in a pressurized suit would not have been able to fit through the LEM door. In an audio interview, which can be found on the Spacecraft Films DVD, Schweikart claims his lunar module's engine was silent. We had a number of surprises. Um, in the lunar module, you know, you had the two engines, the, the descent engine down at the bottom, and then the ascent engine that was buried right in the middle of it, um, uh, at the bottom of the ascent stage. But all you had to do was reach around behind you, and you could lay your hand on the top of that engine bell. I mean, it had a can over it, but there's the that rocket engine is literally sitting right there. You can just reach around and there it is. And so Jim and I, when we lit off the, uh, when we knew we were going to be lighting off the ascent engine uh, to test that during the rendezvous, um, we figured, you know, we're not going to be able to hear each other. So if anything is going wrong, we worked out a whole bunch of hand signals, you know, that would allow us to communicate in case uh, something went wrong during that ascent engine burn. So we count down, three, two, one, ignition, you know, phew, light off the ascent engine, and there's no noise, no, no noise at all. Jim, what's going on, you know, anything wrong? No, nothing's wrong, you know, we're looking at the, you know, we had to look at the instrument to see that the acceleration was up, you know, so we knew the engine was working, but it didn't make any noise at all. So that was a great pleasant surprise, I mean, that there wasn't any acoustic coupling there. And it shut off and just kept going, but it was, you know, it was pleasant surprises like that. This is an agreement to the claims made by Buzz Aldrin and Alan Bean, but conflicts with the claims made by Gene Cernan. On page 317 of his book, The Last Man on the Moon, 
Gene Cernan wrote this about his alleged ascent to the moon aboard Lunar Module Challenger. The rocket engine continued its booming growl, and the constant vibrations felt like big wheels were churning beneath my feet. This is not what Buzz Aldrin reported during his alleged liftoff from the moon on Apollo 11. And here is Apollo 12 LEM pilot Alan Bean telling us the exact same thing during his alleged descent to the moon aboard a lunar module Intrepid. The rocket engine that we used to descend to the moon was uh, a very simple rocket engine. Uh, it operated at low pressure so that it was like running your car at 30 miles an hour, not running your car like a race car. The, the engines we used to launch from Earth was like running your car at race car speeds, you know. So everything had to be just right. But we were interested in safety paramount right there. We didn't have last minute checks we could do. We only had one engine that couldn't fail, so it ran at lower pressure. And uh, w when you were in it, you couldn't hear it in the vacuum of space. As we saw earlier, Schweikart said the exact same thing about Spider, that his engine was also silent. It's either loud or quiet. Which is it? Does this mean Apollo 9 was also faked? Or is Schweikart just trying to cover for Buzz and Mr. Bean? Or is the engine supposed to be silent and Cernan goofed during his testimony? I honestly don't know. This conflict has made me very uncertain about whether or not Apollo 9 was real. However, there is one thing about this mission that should be brought to attention. 